Hey guys, this is GB Wang. I'm a longtime player of StarCraft II, and I'm obviously a big fan. And so today I'm actually going to be uh, giving my very first uh, tutorial video uh, for the TVZ matchup for you guys. And so hopefully you enjoy this. Um, the thing is, in my opinion, uh, TVZ is actually the uh, probably the easiest matchup, and part of it is uh, kind of unfortunate because in the, in the current state of the game, like Zerg is a very difficult race to play because they require a lot, um, like a lot higher APM. Their units are very. Um, cost inefficient, and the the way that you win is by tactics. You can't win by brute force, as opposed to like Terran versus Protoss. And so this build is going to really kind of accentuate that for you guys. And this is a build that I use very heavily um, in the ladders. I'm currently like um, like rank ten or twenty diamond or something like that as a randoms player, and I've actually beaten grandmasters with uh, with this build as well. And so. Um, the idea behind this is it's uh, what makes it very powerful is that it's a timing push that's designed to uh, push out at around the nine minute mark and it uh, it uh, it hits with units that are inherently very difficult for Zerg players to counter and so in this first video I'm just going to give you guys a um, kind of like a, a tutorial on how to execute the build there's actually been a lot of thought that um, goes on to the uh, that uh, went on to explain the logic behind that and I'll put that up in a subsequent video as well. So with that being said, um, let's go ahead and get started. So the um, so first in broad strokes what this build is, it's it's a 3 Thor rush that pushes out at 9 minutes as I had alluded to with um, Blue Flame Hellion follow up. And so here's how it's executed. So after you put down the supply depot, you make sure you put down the refinery afterwards. And so this is a gas first build. The reason why you do gas first is because this Thor rush is going to be limited by um, by the amount of gas. That's really the limiting resource. And also it's a timing issue because when you get this barracks to come online, you can throw down an immediate factory because you'll have 100 gas. So it's really nice. One of the other things that I've done here is that I've thrown up a um, a supply depot for an early wall off as well and the reason why I do this is um, in part because I'm a randoms player and sometimes when you play against other players as randoms they get kind of paranoid and they do weird stuff like they'll do like a 10 like a 10 uh, 10 pool or a 7 roach rush or stuff like that and so you just um, you don't want to let you don't want to lose to that because that's just kind of shameful so Afterwards, you know, um, once the barracks is done, you throw down your factory and you also get an orbital command center. And in this case, I scouted after I put down the second supply depot. And the scouting is a little bit variable for me. The bottom line is I do late scouts because, uh, especially in this matchup, and the reason for that is unfortunately for Zerg is that they're a very predictable race with their openers because if you think about it what can they really do they can make lings they can make roaches and they can make banes but all of these units um, they're all like kind of like melee or very short range units they're all ground units and they can all be countered by a wall at least temporarily and so when I scouted him the only thing I wanted to look for was this expansion I saw it and that pretty much guarantees that I'm gonna have Thor's out there's absolutely nothing to worry about and life is good so I pull the SCV back and um, get it to get it back on mining and this actually makes a really big difference if you can save all of your SCVs so with that being said you know I'll crank out some occasional Marines after the factory is done you throw up an armory and so positioning is really key in the in this matchup too with respect to armory placement um, I actually knew this guy was cross position even before I scouted because if you notice I, I went straight for the cross position and the reason for that is because in the current version of Metalopolis there's only two spawns you can get um, either close air or you can get cross position so so and I had already um, sent an SCV out to check for close air the close air overlord so I put this over here obviously it's impossible for any Ling to scout that armory it's also very difficult for the overlord to pick it up in time especially because when I'm cranking out the Marines if you notice I'm starting to spread out these Marines as well to deny any scouting so once the um once the second uh, uh, once the first factory is done and the armory is done, you throw down the second factory and by this point, you know, you should get two SEVs and you should s start cranking out supply depots in pairs. The reason for that is because Thor is a very, um, it's a very supply intensive unit. It actually costs six supply per Thor. And so you want to make sure you don't get supply blocked in this build. Um, it's pretty critical. So at this point in time, you know, I'm going to have SCVs. They're just going to keep cranking out supply depots, and then I'm going to be making Thors. So 
Also, in terms of timing, the limiting point at this at this juncture is that it's getting your three Thors out. So that takes priority. You make Marines when you can, but again, the main thing is they're just a little bit extra firepower and to deny scouting, but Thors take priority. Because once those three Thor come out, you can push out immediately. And the earlier you push out, the better. So. Um, so in this point in time, nothing much is going on, still making some more supply depots, churning out some marines and stuff. And so let's talk about what to do after you get the three Thor out. I still like to keep my SCVs on gas, and so what you do with the gas is you get plus one uh, vehicle plating. Vehicle plating is so much better than um, plus one weapons, especially for Zerg, because if you look at the Thor, each Thor has 400 hit points, and they have natural plus one armor. That means it takes a single Zergling 100 bites to shut down a Thor. But if you get plus one armor uh, on top of this base armor, it's going to take like 134 or so, you know, Zergling bites to kill the Thor, and it pretty much addresses the Thor's weakness. Because the main thing with Thor is that uh, they have a tendency to get overwhelmed by units, and so this really helps to minimize it. At this point, I actually didn't do that great of a job in denying scouting, so he saw the Thors, but I have my three Thors out, and it's time to push out. So after you've researched the plus one armor, you're going to get more gas as well, and the gas, um, the next 150 gas, you get um, Infernal Pre-Igniter as well. And so from here on out, you're just cranking out mass marines and mass hellions especially. You want the hellions to rally on the Thors. You don't even have to hotkey them. The hellions will just attack when the Thors attack, and they'll stick with the Thors, which is really helpful. And so... And you've noticed too, because this is an all-in kind of a push, I've pulled SCVs, and the number that I pull is I pulled 12 SCVs, because this is an all-in kind of a push, and you only want the minimum number of SCVs here to um, keep up with um, with Hellion production, as well as with Marine production. And so as you can see, as the Thors are walking by, you're already getting Marine and Hellion reinforcements that are coming by. You're not going to crank out another Thor, because by the time like the Thor gets built and gets there, it's not even going to be relevant for for, um, for when you need it the most. So you're just flooding it with units that are quick to produce. And so let's just take a look at this now and how efficient this build really is. So looking at the units lost, um, this guy, he's actually a pretty decent Zerg player as well. He, um, you know, he's getting a diverse unit composition. He has roaches. He's going to have lings as well to attack. Um, and so now, you know, he's getting all of his units here. He's trying to get a good surround. But look at what's happening. Like, no damage is being done whatsoever. And at this point in time, you can see vehicle plating just kicked in. Blue flame just kicked in as well. So they, they kick in in the heat of battle when you need it the most. And, um... And now it's like, it's pretty much academic at this point in time. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of an army. You, you don't even need to worry about the overlords. The main thing is you want to kill their army first, and then you want to destroy buildings like hatcheries and stuff like that, because then they can't reinforce. You don't even have to kill drones, because they just die as a default in the end to those Hellions. And so, by the time this hatchery goes down, it's already over. I mean, he's got nothing... You know, he's got nothing going on in his third, um, and now he's just, he's desperate. He's trying to mount this last-ditch effort to stop this. In the meantime, all the while, you know, I've got more Hellions coming out, more Marines coming out to reinforce. I'm getting stronger as he's getting weaker. And one of the things that you always want to do, too, if you've noticed, I have my SCVs hotkeyed, and I have them auto-repaired as well. You have to make sure um, to do that, because otherwise, you run into this stupid mistake that I just made. I wasn't paying attention, and I lost my SCVs. Um, this is one way that the Thor Rush can lose, but when you see Banelings, just run the SCVs away, because Banelings are a terrible counter to Thors, and then you just pull the SCVs right back to repair them. So he actually killed one Thor, which is pretty commendable. I mean, most of the time, like, I don't really lose a single Thor, and so, and part of that was my mistake from not pulling away, you know, the, um, the SCVs, and so, as you can see, this is a really powerful build, and I'm going to put up another video as well, and so now that you know how to actually, um, use this build. I'm going to explain some of the nuances I went behind making it. So thanks for listening, guys. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed this and this will help you dominate in uh, TVZ.